Welcome to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Today we'll be doing something slightly different. But instead of reviewing simply one rifle, we'll be doing a bit of a historic face-off between two very popular underlever rifles in the late 80s and early 90s market. These two competed each other for the number one spot, and we'll see in this video which one really was the king of the underlevers. The Virarch HW77 or the Webley Eclipse. Now I will try to be as unbiased as physically possible because I won't lie to you, this Eclipse is actually my own one. But as stated, I'll try to be as unbiased as possible to try and give as fair review as I possibly can. So then, let's talk about both rifles in a bit more detail and then move on to features, handling, accuracy and then overall verdict. The first rifle we'll look at to give a bit of history and backstory as to what we're dealing with is the Virarch HW77. This ugly cold piece of German engineering took the target rifle segment by storm back when it was released in 1983, and ever since then even today has been invading people's gun cabinets and refusing to leave them. I have no idea why, probably because the people haven't yet heard about the Webley Eclipse. Now then, let's move on to the Webley Eclipse. Next up we'll look at the Webley Eclipse in a totally serious, unbiased way. Back when the Virarch HW77 was causing so much trouble back in 1983, Webley took a look and thought to themselves, hmm, we can't be having that jerry invading our soil once again, we didn't stick up for that back in 1940 you know, and so they come up with their own answer, underlever answer, to the HW77, and that answer was the Webley Eclipse. You can already see from here that although the stocks are very similar, the Webleys is instantly more beautiful, and I'm sure it'll absolutely spank the Virarch when it comes to shooting them. So then, that's completely unbiased history out of the way. Now let's move on to features, then accuracy, and then we'll talk about the uh, final verdict as to which one's better. That one. Now, all joking put aside, let's get a bit more serious now, and let's talk about the features of both of these rifles. The Virarch is on the bottom, the Webley is on top. Starting from the rear, both rifles have a rather nicely finished off rubber butt pad, with the Webley having a slightly more pronounced curve to the rear of the butt pad compared to the, the Virarch's more flat shape off at the end. Both rifles also sport a cheek piece, with the Virarch's feeling a lot more pronounced and wider at the side of the cheek piece here. However, it's more shallow compared to the Webley at the actual top, so the Webley has a slightly higher cheek piece here. Again, might make a slight difference to uh, those interested in this sort of thing, but to be honest, when they're shouldered, they do feel pretty damn similar. Moving along a bit, both rifles come with beautiful checkering on the grip. The Virox is ever so slightly deeper than the Webleys, if I'm being honest, but it's barely noticeable. But on the flip side, towards the end of the, uh, the grips here, the Virarch isn't capped off quite so nicely as the Webley. The Virarch's just got a very smooth cap on here, whereas if you go to the Webley's, it's got a nice sort of textured finish to it, which is a nice little piece of uh, attention to detail, in my opinion. Moving on to the rear of the action, we also get to the safeties of both rifles. The Virarch uses the tried and tested push-button automatic style safety that uh, arms itself once the rifle has been cocked. The Webley's is also automatic, and is also you'll notice if you use a Hatsan 8044, you'll see that this safety is very, very familiar to you, as it's pretty much the exact same thing. And like the Virarch, the safety engages once the rifle has been cocked. Moving along, we get to the triggers. Both are very fine, in my opinion, two-stage units. They do differ ever so slightly. At a quick glance, they look very similar, but the Virarch uses the, once again, tried and tested and very famous for a good reason record unit, which is a particularly sweet two-stage unit, which can be adjusted by adjusting the small screw through the, uh, pointing screwdriver through the trigger guard there and going up to the adjustment screw behind. The Webley is also an adjustable unit, but you adjust the Webley, if you can just, just about see here, there's a small screw just at the front of the trigger blade just up there and you get to that through a hole in the trigger guard again once again with a screwdriver. Regarding the actual blades themselves, how they feel, the Webley features a more hooked blade. The curve is deeper than that of the Virox and it also has deeper grooves running through the trigger blade which again I personally quite like the the groove trigger blades. I've always appreciated that. A little bit of more attention to detail never goes amiss. 
That being said, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the blade on the Virarch. It might be even be, you could even say in some areas it's more refined. It's a thinner looking blade, whereas in comparison the Webleys can look a bit chunky. The trigger guards also have their own detailing on them with the Virarch featuring an almost fully covered checkered patting pattern on the uh, metalwork here. Whereas the Webley has a slightly protruding but not quite fully stretching pattern on here. It doesn't quite go to the full length of the blade. The uh, guard, sorry. But uh, otherwise, no. Both have very nice units on them. Moving along, we get to the fore end of the stocks, which, again, at a quick glance, they may look very, very similar, but upon closer inspection, you'll see that the Webley actually has a thicker, taller stock to that of the Virarc. Again, it's not really that much to pay that much attention to, but if you have a preference, if you like a wider stock, then maybe the Webley may suit you a bit better than the Virarc. Moving on to the tip of the action, however, we get to the main thing that separates both of these rifles. The Webley is loaded using a tap loader system. Simply pull this small lever up here and you open up the tap where you can insert a pellet. Whereas the Virarc features a very revolutionary, for the time, sliding breech system. The exact same system can still be found on the HW97 today, and in my opinion, it is still the best sliding breech system. Moving further along to the underlever segment of the both rifles, you see that both rifles, even to today's standards, are beautifully finished. The Virarc still looks absolutely brand new, and this Virarc was actually bought by my uncle back in, I think it was 1987, but I'm not too sure. And even today, the bluing is absolutely top notch. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about my pretty much brand new HW97. The Webley is also absolutely fantastically finished with the bluing, or blacking, however you want to look at it, how deep it is, it does pretty much look black, is absolutely fantastic. You'll also uh, notice if I pan back that the Webley is quite a bit longer than the Virarc. We'll see how that affects accuracy when we come to the performance and testing section. At the absolute tip of the barrel, we'll also see another difference between both rifles, and that is how you release the underlever. These early Virarcs use a slide design. If you slide this little switch forward, see this toggle, the underlever will release itself. Personally, see I'm struggling to get that back in, hang on, bear with me. Personally, I do much prefer the updated design, what they've done. They've actually gone for a very similar layout to what the Webley has, and the Webley operates using a simple push button system. It's easy to you when you ha use when your hands are cold. Simply put your finger towards the button and the lever will pretty much release itself. The Virarc is still fairly easy to use, but at the same time, if your hands are cold, you can have a few issues pushing this up without... Well, it basically feels like it's killing your finger. But that's not it. The Webley actually has yet another trump card. And that is that, if you notice, if I pan this camera around, you'll see that the Webley's barrel is actually threaded because the Webley can also come with a silencer, as you can see here, which makes a rifle that was already longer than the Virarc even longer still. You won't miss any rabbits if you aim at them with the Webley because you can pretty much point the barrel directly up to their head. But that's it for features for both rifles. Now we'll move on to handling and see how each rifle feels when actually put through some tests. So then, let's move on. So then, let's move on to handling. What's the Eclipse like when it comes to putting it to your shoulder and actually loading it? Well, the Eclipse, what makes it a lot more different to a lot of the underlevers on the market today, is a tap loader. And what this means is, instead of having a sliding breech, you have to manually lift up a tap to load the pellet in. If you can see it in there, there's your breech with the bright orange rubber seal. When it comes to loading the Eclipse, all you have to do, like a normal underlever, break the lever down, which will cock the spring, open the tap loader up, simply slide a pellet straight through the breech there, and then close it shut, like so. It's not too bad to load. It is a little bit more hassle and effort compared to your standard underlever, but it's, it's not too bad. The thing that I do really like about this rifle though, that does absolutely thrash the 77, and this isn't me talking in good old British pride mode, but this 
automatic safety is fantastic. It's on a lot of the Hatsan rifles, it's a very, very similar design as, design as what you'll see on a AT-44. And it's fantastic. Once you cock the rifle, this toggle at the back will jut straight out. To disengage the safety, simply slam it forwards like that. Easily within thumb, thumb reach, don't even really need to, if you wanted to, even lift the finger off the trigger. Just pop and off she goes. And it can also be reset like so. So once you've switched it all off, simply all you have to do is take aim at your target and give her a squeeze. When it comes to shouldering the Webley, it's actually, despite how it might look and the length of the thing, like I said, this is longer than the 77, and I'd even wager it's probably a damn sight longer than my 97. But it's really a lot lighter than what you'd think it was. It shoulders beautifully, and that checkering feels fantastic upon your fingertips. Overall, there's absolutely no complaints with the rifle when it comes to handling. The only minor niggle that I can think of is that tap loader. But personally, I quite like it. I also like the, as we mentioned earlier, push-button underlever release, which is also another thing that I'd say is superior to that particular model 77. So then, speaking of the 77, let's jump to that and let's see what the German can do. So then, the German. How does the 77 feel in the hand? Well, very much like the Webley, pretty damn solid if I'm honest, and also not as heavy as you might think going by its looks. My 97 is a bit of a heifer to hold, my one's the synthetic stock, and even with that she's pretty heavy, but this is absolutely fantastic. The scope on here is a period Fontaine, which is the same magnification as what was on the Webley, a 4x40, and it's actually really, really nice to hold and shoulder, and it still feels, to be honest with you, better than a lot of rifles that's on the market today. So how do we load the 77, and why was the sliding breech such a good design? Well, I'll now demonstrate. With the tap-loading Webley, we had to break that lever down, return it back to its resting position, open the tap, load a pellet, close the tap shut, and then you're more or less ready to go once you've sorted out the safety. With this, however, you do pretty much two of those actions in one sweeping manoeuvre, and I'll show you what I mean. Simply use that underlever release there, and then when you break the lever down, you'll see that slide opens up and that exposes your breech. Well, you simply then load a pellet in, close it back up, which then closes the breech like so. See the underlever return there is not quite as smooth as the Webley, if I've got to be honest, but again it's still pretty good, could just be me fluffing it. And then all you've got is the automatic safety to disengage and you're ready to go. As mentioned, once she's at the shoulder, it does feel exceptionally nice to uh, hold steady. And the checkering, which again, it's, there's not much difference between them, to be fair, but the checkering is just absolutely beautiful to your fingers. It is really nice. You've got a ton of grip there, and it's simply a case of aim up, give her a squeeze, and hopefully whatever you aimed at is just dead. There is something here now that I do actually have to confess before we get on to the accuracy test. And that is that, well, it may sound like there's been a little bit of foul play. For one, I fluffed it up a little bit, what I was talking about earlier, and that's actually a 4x32 and not 4x40. Uh, both scopes are period scopes, though. You've got a Tasco on this one and the Fontaine that came with this one. But that's not what I'm talking about. What is actually, uh, not as it seems, is that this Eclipse, although completely standard in every other single way, it's even got the, uh, as you can see here, the sticky rubbish that they put on here where there was originally a strip of Veltro that's Velcro sorry that's since fallen off. Um, the Eclipse is currently running on a Titan spring that has replaced the standard spring. I can hear the Virarc fans in the background now threatening to uh, burn me at the stake but if anything it's the Eclipse that is sort of starting off on a back foot at the moment and I'll tell you why. This may look like a standard HW77 because it does look like a standard HW77. However, back in the day, they used to offer a thing known as Zephyr tuning. Now, Zephyr tuning, they did even do an actual um, limited edition or special edition HW77 Zephyr, which actually came in its own unique target style stock. If you haven't seen one yet, have a look at the pictures online. They're absolutely fantastic. Anyways, back on point. This 77 when purchased by my, un my uncle um, in the 80s was actually, although not put in the Zephyr stock, did have the Zephyr tuning done. He still has the paperwork back home, tucked up somewhere I believe. This has had a full Zephyr tune, 
which I believe, uh, if you take a look into it, Zephyr is now basically Venom, uh, or today known as Venom. So if anything, it is the Webley that's on the back foot. But even so, it will still be interesting to test the Webley Eclipse versus the HW77 Zephyr tune and see just what an 80s tune 77 can do when put at a comp direct competition uh, at 25. And now, thankfully, because the forestry trailer is gone, hallelujah, we can now go out even further to 40 yards. So we have our 25 yard target sitting up just there. And then we can move on further because now I can finally get the chair around and we can go all the way back there, which has been measured out to 40 yards. So then, enough of this, let's move on to the fun part, accuracy testing. And I'm very, very much so looking forward to this. Pellets that we're using will be pellets that there's a good chance these are probably shot yonks ago, and that is the good old RWS Superdomes. So then, enough of this faffing around, let's actually do some testing. First up, We'll sort out the Webley Eclipse, and then we'll go to the HW77. Next up, Virock. GoPro, stop recording. Just as uh, a little something to, uh, to cut away to, the uncle who you can hear in the tractor in the background now, just been offloading some wood, decided he'd uh, see what we're up to and have a go at his old faithful 77. There he goes, just through there. He shot at what he thought was a piece of wood on the ground. So if you see any targets with a gigantic gaping hole cut through the side of them, you know why it's happened. <laughs> Let's move on. Webley, 40 yards. Hi everyone, unfortunately our cameras had a slight mishap when recording the Webley groups, the live groups. Thankfully the actual result is still on the, we've still got the, the original target card um, for the verdict section and accuracy results section, but the actual video of the live shooting didn't seem to save to the camera. So what we're going to do now is uh, another group here, uh, just to show what the Webley can do, another live group, just to make up for the one that we've lost. However, the one in the verdict will still be the original group that was shot. Thanks guys, and let's see how we do. Thank you. 
walk up to the target now. Once again, I do apologise about this. Unfortunately, the uh, well, blame the camera. That's all I'm going to say. We will have the original result uh, still saved there. Thankfully, it saved that. But this has actually been taken well after uh, we was filming this particular episode. But these shots are a little bit rough and uh, and rushed, I'll say. But there you go. That's. I'll keep it uh, original speed so as we can see everything here. Actually, guys, let me know what you prefer. If you prefer actual live shooting like this, we'll sped up and uh, I'll change it for the future. Thanks, and we'll get straight back to uh, the results and verdict. See you in about three seconds. Next up, the Virarc HW77 at 40 yards. So then, the accuracy results are in. What did we learn during our testing? Well, I'll tell you what I learned. Shooting at 40 yards with a 4 times zoom scope is a very humbling experience. And we'll shoot, soon see why when we zoom in a bit more. So then, 25 yards. Let's look at both groups. I have the, uh, the trusty 5 pence piece right here. Let's have a look. We've got Webley on the right hand side. Quite frankly, I am extremely impressed with that. Let's just uh, plonk her on there. And the entire group is covered up in the five pence piece. I've seen PCPs with worse accuracy than that. For a 19, I think the eclipse was it late 80, mid 80, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but for a, a, an old gun, we'll put it that way, for an old gun that is absolutely phenomenal. Granted, it has a Titan spring, but then at the same time, that's the only modification. So then, now let's swing over to the HW77. Again, a pretty damn good group to be fair. Let me put the five pence piece there. And it is pretty much entirely covered up by the five pence piece. Now we do have a flyer, but what I'm going to mention about that, and this is where I'm going to get the Webley guys go, oh, Dan, come on, you want the Virarc to win. But what I'm going to say is, a lot of that, where I shot the Webley first, their triggers are so different, you have to shoot them to believe them. Both are really good. But as I said earlier, the Virarc's got a shorter pull but a slightly, as it's set at the minute, a slightly stiffer pull. Whereas the, the Webley is a slightly longer pull, but it's soft. So this difference here, and that flyer, that is not the gun. I'm going to discount that, and we're going to pretend that that is in there. Because, and this left to right movement here, that is also, to be honest, not so much the gun. When it comes to 25 yard groupings, I'd happily say that if I had equal amount of practice on both guns, I'd say they'd both put out the exact same group. That's not a slight devour arc, because at the end of the day, unrested at 25 yards, that's a bloody good group, if I say so myself. That's also not too bad a group, if we're being honest with each other, other than we've got a flyer there, but again, that's my fault, and this spread, I'll also say, is my fault, this horizontal spread, not being used to the trigger. However, when we move on to 40 yards from an unrested position, things get a little bit less pretty for me. We've got the Webley here, where we've got three pellets almost touching down here. Let me get the five pence back. Let me see. Can we can I try and scuff that up to the extent of the card on a five pence? Oh, I nearly can. That's almost three out of five anyway, so it's, it's at least a couple of them. I, I can say there is a group there at least, but three of them fit more or less under a five pence piece with the top one just poking his little head out there. I'm reasonably happy with that, to be honest with you, because again, a four time zoom scope, unrested, and with the reticle, with both these scopes, isn't even with mill dots, so it's blatantly, basically all I'm looking at is uh, just a thin line, basically, with no real reference that I can use on there at all. And I'm aiming, they're zero at about 25 yards, I'm aiming about here to get them going down here. And then next, we've got the HW77, which unfortunately, we've, eh, it's not really a group, to be fair. Again... I'm not used to the trigger, which slightly it opens it up compared to the Webley there at 25 yards. So again, this could just be me getting used to the trigger. All I'm going to say is, with a proper set of scopes on them, say even a, a 3 to 9 by 40 on them each, so I've at least got a little bit more zoom, four times at 40 yards is really not enough, to be fair with you. But if I had better scopes on them, I'm quite confident, although I might not get groups like that again at 40 yards, I'm quite confident that I could tighten that up a hell of a lot. I reckon I could easily, I could get... A 20 pence group with the right scope with both of these rifles here. 
mean, I'm not far off of it there with three of the pellets, but two of them went wayward. But accuracy-wise, yeah, they're both pretty much, they're as good as each other, I've got to be honest. And considering that uh, the Webley is known as being the bit of the, living in the shadow of the 77, I'm incredibly impressed with that Webley, especially to put that result out against the Zephyr-tuned 77. So then, we're losing light, so I guess we had better move on to the final verdict. So then, verdict time. Which rifle is best out of the... Wait a minute. How did I get here? All joking aside, there's actually some work going on around the farm at the moment, so we have to do this video in the great outdoors. Uh, I do apologise if you can hear any wind noise or the A12 just in the distance up there. Um, I'm afraid I have very little choice at the moment, but we shall soldier on anyway. As I was saying, out of the two, the Virarch HW77 or the Webley Eclipse, which one came out the best? Well, let's try and break it down into a few different categories and we'll see which one we personally think, or I think, is the best in that category. So first things first, looks. This is a pretty shallow uh, subject to be talking about really because everyone's opinion will be slightly different. In my honest opinion, the 77 is a very pretty rifle don't get me wrong, but I do prefer the Webley Eclipse. The checkering, I'll say this like I said before, I will be fair, the checkering on the 77 is a little bit deeper than the Eclipse, but the Eclipse to me has got more little bits of attention to detail to it, which I always like. For instance, the little cap here on the bottom of the grip has actually been textured instead of just the bit boring smooth cap just on the end here. Uh, and as well as that, it's loads of other little things as well. For instance, I like the way if you can see that, on the end of the barrel shroud, there's Eclipse has been uh, printed in there, which still looks quite modern and quite fancy today. Whereas with the Virarch, it's got Virarch written in there, but it is very, it's very German. There's no real, I get no fancy vibes off of it, I'll put it that way. When it comes to the stocks, I think once again, other than the checkering, I do prefer, they're very similar if I'm being honest, but I do prefer the Webley stock over the Virarch stock. The Webley just feels a little bit more special to hold. Um, it just feels a little bit more, I don't know how to put it, but the, the extra thickness of the stock here, like what you can see, is a little bit, fair bit thicker there. It does seem to fit me better in hand, and in my opinion, I think it does look a little bit nicer as well. So then, that's the looks out the way, that's one up to the Webley. So what about handling? Well, the Webley does fairly well here. The underlever release is a far better system to what this early model Virarch 77 has, where it's a switch release, what you can see here which can get a little bit stiff. It does need oiling every now and again, and it's just a little bit of a hassle to use. As mentioned earlier, if you're doing it, using it in the winter, um, it can be a little bit awkward to use when you can't really feel your fingertips. Um, other than that, the other slight thing that the Webley has over the Virarch is that, although it's a, it is a tap loader, which is slower, um, you're under no real risk of losing your fingers should the bear trap uh, decide to fail or the piston decide to engage itself uh, as there's no actual piston goes through there that's pretty much just pure air goes through here so you, you won't ever lose your fingers with it so that's a nice little feature but again I'm beating around the bush as I'm sure you can tell handling um, and such as definitely it's got to go to the Virarch that sliding piston design Sliding breech, sorry, is just so much easier to use than a tap loader. The tap loader on the Webley is nice to use, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it does feel a bit like an old muzzle loader compared to the Virarch. It does take a little bit longer. Um, the other advantage, again, this, this little, it's not really advantage, this is a tie, in my personal opinion. Many will say, if you look on the forums, that the Virarch has the better trigger on average. The Webley trigger, in my opinion, I actually really, really like it, and I personally got the best results with the Webley trigger, as I tend to, in general, prefer a softer trigger. But the record unit does seem to be a little bit more adjustable, in my opinion. You can make it fairly soft, pretty damn soft, to as heavy as you want it, more or less, to be. So, in this test, my personal test, it's a tie, but I'm sure with many others out there, they will give that point to the, uh, the Virarch. So, so far, that is 1-1. One, one. So, how about accuracy? This is another sort of grey area, if I'm being honest, because although, here we go, we have the faithful five pence coin here, the Webley at 25 yards let out a stonking five shot group. It sits perfectly under the five pence piece there. That was using the, both rifles used the Superdome, Superdome, sorry, as already mentioned. Um, the Virarx was a bit wider and we did have a flyer there. It does almost sit under, whoops, sit under that uh, five pence piece, but 
The main issue with that isn't the rifle itself, but more the person using it. I'm more used to a lighter trigger, and the current trigger that's set up on here um, is a little bit more stiff. If I'm being honest, I know there's the flyer there as well, but if I'm being honest, the Virarc, I can tell you, will be able to do a very similar group to the Webley there. So I'm going to call accuracy, especially at 25 yards, a tie. At 40 yards, things, well, <laughs> I haven't done very much shooting with a four, only four times zoom scope. Um, give me, it cut me a little bit of slack. The Webley at 40 yards almost sits under the five pence piece. There's a tiny little bit just poking out just above my fingernail there. Um, the other two shots were flyers. Again, I'm using a really basic um, scope on here, a Tasco scope, and I've not, I'm not used to using four times zoom. Um, I'm a 90s kid, so I've been spoilt with, say, 16 times zoom scopes and things like that, mill dots, you name it. Uh, the Virarc didn't really group. Again, that's not really the rifle's fault. I'm more than confident that somebody who's used to this sort of particular setup on this trigger, uh, like stiffer trigger, would be able to get much, much, much better groups than that. Accuracy-wise, I'm actually going to call this a tie, which I know now I've got a lot of Webley people screaming at me uh, down the video saying, this is rigged. Um, no, for the simple reasons as already mentioned. If you have somebody used to the Webley, they'll be able to put out, the, the Virarc, sorry, you'd be able to put out much better groups um, with the Virarc than what I'm currently doing at the minute, and they can only be very, very similar to what I got with the Webley. At the same time, though, I do hope this video shows that the Webley Eclipse, although it was massively overshadowed by the Virarc when it was released, uh, the Virarc had already done its damage. The Webley was basically too little too late. The Webley is still a stonking rifle, and if you was ever tempted to get one, definitely go forwards and invest in one right now. Um, they are a lot of rifle for the money. These days, they usually go for around 200 to 250 pounds by uh, just a quick look online. Um, Again, it varies on the nick, but to be honest, they are a very, very, very nice rifle to shoot. Um, other little things I'll mention, um, shot cycles between the pair of them. Again, the Webley isn't on the standard spring, it's on a Titan spring at the minute, and the Virarc is a Zephyr-tuned Virarc. Shot cycles, again, it depends on what you like. Uh, if you're after a more smooth shot cycle, but perhaps with a slightly slower lock time, if you can get your hands on a Zephyr Tune 77, you'll absolutely adore it. The Webley, on the other hand, this particular model is the complete opposite side of the spectrum. This one, the lock time is absolutely speed of light. It's you pull the trigger and bang, that pellet's on its way. Uh, but there is a little bit more kick to it, and it also lets out, instead of a twang, or the normal twang like you'd expect, like a, the Virarc lets out, lets out a very sort of low pitch twang, the Webley is more of like a high pitch, almost like a shriek when you pull the trigger. Uh, it could be due to the, the alloy piston in there. I don't know, I'm no expert. If you know any more about this, what could be causing this, leave a comment down below. Uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty of people probably could be interested in hearing uh, the reasoning behind it. But yeah, out of the two of them, I genuinely can't really, in my opinion, find a better rifle. The 77 definitely outlived the Eclipse, there's no denying that, and the 77, when it was introduced, it absolutely took the air gun market by storm, and, well, th there's a reason the, uh, the 77 took off like it did, whereas the dear old Eclipse sort of got left in the dark a little bit. Um, but I personally, these two examples I've shot, I can't really pick a winner between them. If I was going by my head, if I had to choose either one of them, maybe I would go for the Virarc simply because we all know what it can do. Uh, but at the same time, if I was letting my heart rule me, I think I would probably walk away with the Webley every time. It's just, in my opinion, got that little bit more charm than what the Virarc has. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. We do plan to have some more shoot-offs in the future where we go uh, quite nerdily in depth with both rifles or two different rifles and see which one wins. Uh, we also may have a planned value for money um, video where I try and look into the science of which rifles are value for money and which ones aren't uh, and see what we can make out with that. But uh, thanks for watching. If you have any rifles you'd like to see us review in the future, please leave a comment down below and we'll get on to it ASAP. Thanks, thanks for watching, everybody, and take care.